Hello and welcome to lecture 46 of my class from data to decisions. I'm Chris Mack, your instructor, and in this lecture we're going to use R to perform some subset regressions. What that means is we're going to take a data set that has uh, multiple regressor variables, multiple predictor variables, and you want to compare a full model, a model that includes all of the predictor variables that we think might be important, and compare it to a subset model, a model that has some of those but not all of those. And we want to know whether there's a difference between these two statistically. Difference. The data set we're going to use is the body fat data set. We've used it a couple of times. We take some biomeasures like uh, circumference of the abdomen or chest or biceps or uh, etc. height, weight, and we want to predict the percent body fat. It's a very difficult thing to measure, so we have some accurate measurements, and we want to predict them using these other simpler measures. Here I've created a reduced version of that data set where I've, I've picked only six of the 12 or so, 14 or so variables to include, and that just makes it a little bit more manageable for this uh, demo, but you could do the exact same demo for all of them if you'd like. So I'm going to load up that data set, and just as a reminder, look at it. This is what's called a data frame. Data frame has uh, columns. Each column has labeled with a name, and uh, one of them, our response, body fat, and the other the potential regressor variables. Every row is a data point. Uh, and once we're in this data frame uh, format, I can use a function called plot. And if I plot a data frame, I get something really quite beautiful, I think. It's a very, very useful plot where I, I look at every single pairwise correlation between these two variables, between every two variables. So I put body fat first, so that shows up on the top. And here I show how body fat uh, looks plotted against weight, chest, abdomen, etc. Awesome. But I can also look at every correlation between uh, input variables, predictive variables. So, for example, abdomen versus hip. And with this plot, I can very quickly see that, for example, weight is correlated very well with hip circumference, uh, but uh, hip circumference is not as well correlated with bicep circumference, for example. And uh, if I see hip circumference is not very well correlated with body fat, for example. Uh, so we can very quickly look at all of our data in this way. And what I want to know is, should I include every one of these parameters in my model or some subset of these parameters to get the best model, in some sense of the word best? The first thing we'll do is compare two models. So I'll pick a very simple full model, which only has two variables, abdomen and thigh circumferences. And then I'll have a reduced model or a subset model that only has the abdomen. So it's, it's a subset of the full model. All right, I'll go ahead and do linear regressions of those two models, model one and model two, I call them, and I get all my statistics. Then I'm going to compare them with a couple of tests. The first test will be the partial F test. We talked about that in the last lecture. The null hypothesis is that the extra parameters in the full model all have coefficients equal to zero. And if the p-value is uh, low enough, then I can reject that null hypothesis. If the p-value is too high, I can't reject it. The function I'll use in R to compare these two models is ANOVA. On that ANOVA of model one and model two, I get an analysis of variance table with these two models, and I, I get the degrees of freedom, the regression sum of squares, uh, the uh, excess sum of squares, and finally, the F statistic and the p-value for that. So the p-value is 0.03. Well, that's kind of one of those in-between p-values. If I had a significance level of 0.05, you see that it's less. So that the probability of, of getting uh, this much better a model fit with the full model compared to model one uh, has a probability of only 0.03, less than my significance. I can reject the null hypothesis. Model coefficients of the extra parameters are all zero. If I had a significance level of 0.01, however, I couldn't reject the null hypothesis. So I see with this p-value that I'm somewhat in between, and I have a choice to make whether I think that the extra parameters, in this case, I circumference, is worthwhile including in my model. 
Another test we can do on a subset model compared to a full model is the likelihood ratio test. This statistic, the minus 2 times the log of the ratio of the likelihoods of the two models, will be chi-square distributed. And this LR test function will allow me to do that uh, statistical test. It's from the library LM test, so I'll load that library, and then I'll run the LR test. Here I get the chi-square statistic and the p-value, and like other tests, I get a p-value of about point E. So that also uh, arrives at about the same conclusion, uh, somewhat in between whether I should include this extra parameter in the model or not. Those are two statistical tests to help me decide whether a specific subset model is statistically the same as a full model. The full model I'm comparing it to. Another interesting thing we can do, though, is to exhaustively search all subset models and compare them using metrics like the Bayesian information criterion or the Mallow CP or the adjusted R squared. And there's a package that allows us to do this in a very automated way. It's called Leaps. So I've already installed that package, so I'll simply load the library Leaps. Then I will use a function called egg subsets, regression subsets that will run through the subsets of the full model. Now, the first thing I need to do in this function is define the full model. I could define it in the same way I would normally define it, body fat as a function of, and then list all the parameters that I want to include in what I will call the full model. There is a shorthand way of accomplishing that, though, using this notation. Body fat as a function of period. And what that means is body fat as a function of every parameter, every variable that is besides body fat that is found in this data frame that I've just loaded up. So give me, as my full model, body fat as a function of everything, all the first order primary parameters. So that's what this uh, shorthand notation does, makes it a little bit simple. Then the method I'm gonna use to search subset models is the exhaustive method. That is, I will find every single, I have K variables, there are gonna be two to the K possible models, the full model and all of its subset models. In this case, K is six, so I have 64 combinations that I will search through. And this reg subsets routine will run through every single one of these subset models and calculate things like R squared, Mallow CP, adjusted R squared, etc. All right, run that and run it. I'll dump all of that data into a variable I'll call leaps because I'm not very imaginative for my variables. I could call it anything I want, obviously. Uh, and that particular routine has no graphical outputs at all or no outputs whatsoever. So I need to now go and show the results. I could use the summary function. Summary function in this case doesn't show a whole lot of information, um, but I'm going to instead use a routine in a different package called car that we've seen before. So I'll load that library. A package called subsets. Subsets takes heaps variable, which is the results of all of the regressions for all 64 of the subsets plus the full model. I'll take that leaps variable and I will plot it with an output of one of these statistics. Remember, the statistics can be R squared, CP, adjusted R squared, and the regression sum of squares. So there's a list of all the different uh, variables. And it will plot as a function of subset size, whichever one of these I pick. So let me pick, pick the Bayesian information criteria. I will run that, and there it is. There's my plot. It turns out that it also has this locator active, which if I click somewhere on the screen, it will put at that location where I click a, uh, a little legend. And it is plotting all these models using uh, first initials of variable names. Now here, statistic is big, and we want it as small as possible. 
coming down and then it's starting to go back up. It I want to look at is somewhere down here. So I'm going to actually rescale this. I'll rescale it very quickly by doing Y lim, the Y limits, the min and max of the Y scale equals, and it's a list of two numbers, so I have to use the concatenate function, concatenate uh, min and max. So my min, I'll do minus uh, 310, and my max will be minus uh, 290, let's say. All right. And now I'll run that again. Again, I'll put my uh, legend up there. And here I see now uh, that the smallest pick all this Bayesian information uh, criterion comes when I have a two-parameter model with weight and abdomen. The best three-parameter model is weight, abdomen, circumference, and thigh circumference. That three-parameter model has a slightly worse Bayesian information criterion compared to the two-parameter model. So if this was the criterion I was using to find my best, what I would call my best model, the lowest BIC, I would pick this two-parameter model. Now, oh, see how fast and easy it was to search through, in this case, 64 different models? If I had 10 parameters, I'd be searching for 1,024 models, and it does it almost as fast. Uh, and, and you can very, very quickly find what you think is the best model. Now, here I'm plotting pick. I could have decided I wanted to plot on the Mallow CP instead. On the Mallow CP... Simply type in CP instead of book. BIC is the statistic I want to look at. I go run, and it's plotting. It's already been calculated. Uh, it's just plotting it. And here I want something a little bit different. It's looking for the best model for each subset size. So there's a best model for two parameters, a best model for three, and a best model for four parameters, a best model for five parameters, etc. So it doesn't necessarily find the one best model, but in fact, gives you a best for any of these. So the best model for one parameter is the abdomen circumference. The best model for two parameters is weight and abdomen. And uh, well, again, I'm in that mode of not being able to see everything very clearly. So I'll set uh, y lim equal zero to five let's say and run and if i don't want the legend i just hit escape and the legend goes away all right so now i can see what they are for uh, more of these statistics maybe i want to go to 10 instead of five to see a little bit more there so there's my best two my best three my best four my best five uh, etc my best six uh, in this particular case up here, I said, uh, save for me in this LEAPS data the five best models per subset size, so per value of P. That's a parameter I could set. I, I picked five. I could have picked one. If I only cared to know what the best one was, I'd say one. Or if I wanted to see all of them, I'd, I'd pick a larger number there. But for any subset size, uh, this N best tells me how many uh, of those subsets to save in the data that I'm, I'm calculating over here called leaps. All right, one last thing I want to show you, interactions. Remember that we can have models with interactions. If I have interactions, then uh, they're equivalent to model parameters that are products of individual parameters. So an interaction between weight and abdomen and circumference would be a model term that is equal to weight times abdomen and circumference would have units of pounds, centimeters, right? Like the notation period, where uh, it gives me all of the possible individual terms in the full model, if I do period to the power of two, it's a little strange terminology, but that's terminology that R uses. If I use that notation, that tells R I want every possible model with every possible interaction, up to two-fold interactions. That's going to give me the 64 subset models plus all of the possible interactions as well, which I think is going to be six factorial or five factorial. One of the two. So I'm going to add 
five or six factorial to that number. So a very large number, right? but still it, it does it pretty fast. I only have 252 data points. So when I run that, I now have replaced leaps with this new uh, uh, subset registrations that include all of these interaction terms. If I now plot, I'll get rid of my Y limits. If I now plot the same thing, you see that I include the original terms plus all the possible two-factor interactions. And it's a, a large number of them. <laughs> so let's see if I zoom. I don't know how many of them will show up. Eh, it's hard for them to, to show up on this sized screen. Um, but you get the picture that they're all there. I can now go in and search more closely with the Y limb. So I'll simply let that and go back and run it again. I'll hit escape this time. And um, in this case, there's so many of them that are, are low that we want to use a smaller range for Y limb. Uh, and I can see what they what they are uh, here. Uh, maybe I can limit my x variable as well. So here we get the best model per subset size. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to set the n best to be one. And rerun this, and that way the graph will be a little less confusing uh, in terms of the display because it'll only show me the one best model for each number of parameters. All right, I run that. Now I plot, and I this time I'll uh, I'll zoom out a little bit, a little bit differently. So there's my one best uh, two parameter model. Uh, Got to play around with these coefficients a little bit. Let's try two Y limit, the max. My best two now is abdomen and weight abdomen interaction. Turns out to be my best two parameter model, lowest uh, CP. Um, I think I'm going to switch back to the BIC. Uh, look at the results in this case. And my best models for one parameter is just abdomen. Again, abdomen weight interaction. Uh, and the best three parameter model is the best model I have. It's you can barely see it here. It's abdomen, and then thigh, and then weight and thigh, and interaction. So you can see uh, how we can very quickly search through lots of models using these automated functions. In particular, this uh, leaps package has the egg subsets function and the subsets graphing function that allows me to view the results. Very powerful tool. We're going to see this more and some other ways besides an exhaustive search. And we can use some stepwise searches that we'll learn more about later. Till then.